Hey, my name is Rachel. Glad you could make it. Obviously, you can tell by the title, this video is a bit different than what I normally talk about on here, but I've been wanting to make this video for a while. But yeah, I'm going to talk about what it's like to be a background actor, aka an extra. You know, when you're watching a TV show and the main actors are sitting at a restaurant talking, there's all these other people at the restaurant that are kind of like ambiance. And those are real people. Those are background actors that are, you know, making the scene feel more real. Background is one of the things I'm currently doing to make money. I've been doing it for about seven months. And here in LA, like, it's not very uh, cool to tell people you do background work it's not like a high paying job or anything but you know for when I tell like you know friends at home people who like, aren't in LA that are like oh I'm working on this TV show today like people are pretty excited about it and you know if I can like get over my weird pride about it all yeah it is exciting and it's cool and it's just like it's interesting for me mostly I'm like huh this is pretty wild that I'm doing this today it's just kind of like that's what's happening but yeah people will you know shit all over it because it's like you're not being a main actor you're not you know like the producer of a tv show like all that stuff but anyway all that stuff aside i'm not i'm just i'm just gonna talk about it like what it's like kind of give you like an outline for what being a background actor is like because unless you're doing it or you're working in production you don't really know so the way i got started with all of this is signing up with Central Casting. So Central Casting has offices in Los Angeles, New York City, and Atlanta, Georgia. It seems to be like the biggest casting company for background. And the way you sign up with them, it's all free. You kind of have to like pre-register to get a spot, to go to registration. They like kind of give you a little rundown of what it's like, kind of go over a little bit, like what you're supposed to do on set and payment, that sort of thing. You give information, you give your race or portrayable race. You give your measurements and weight and height and eye color, hair color, hair length. Like, you know, this thing, it's all really about what you look like and what your type is like you know when they're looking for people they'd say like we're looking for hispanic portraying people we're looking for ca caucasian portraying people casting directors are looking for a certain type of look and size you know there'll be things are like we're looking for people with very fit and model-esque types we're looking for midwestern types it's all a variety but anyway so you fill out all this information for them they take a picture of you and then that is the picture that the company uses for, you know, finding jobs that you're fit for or more so, you know, they're working for casting directors for a TV show and they're saying, we need this many people, we need this many of this type of person, this many of that, we need 18 to look younger, which is, you know, people who can look like they're a teenager. I get cast as that a lot. I, I look young enough because rarely do for background do they hire minors unless totally necessary like I've worked on a few sets where like there are little kids there and like they just need little kids to do that but there's like more restricted uh, working hours for children their parent needs to be there it's like a whole complicated thing more complicated than just having regular adults being on set. I'm not gonna go into too much of like all the details of like central casting. I'll link their website if you really wanna see like hardcore details of things. But yeah, once you're all signed up with central casting, you can go back and get like more pictures taken. Like if you have like a formal look, you can get a picture in your fancy dress or in an office look at a picture in that. It just kinda helps you get cast for more different things. So then they have like a wider variety of like your looks. I'm literally just got a text from central casting right now and I'm gonna explain this whole texting thing in one second. I just got booked for tomorrow. Hallelujah. So the way that central casting books you for things, one of the ways is they send a text. So they ask if you're available to work on a certain show without time restrictions on a certain day. You have to be available the entire day. You can't only be available in the morning or the afternoon or whatever, unless they say this is a night call. I'll get to that in a second. But yeah, so it says if you're available on this day in this general area, we'll say a certain city or different town in the Los Angeles area. And then it says the role that you would be. So it would be like bar patron, customer, office worker, and then you say yes or no. And at this point, they're only checking your availability. So they're kind of sending out feelers to a few people, seeing if they're available and you need to respond pretty quick. It's like an automated text sort of thing. So if I'm available, I say yes. And then they send a text back and it's like, okay, your, rest, your yes is received. Um, you're not booked until you receive your details. And then you wait. It could be a minute later. It could be like 
three hours later, and then they'll say, congratulations, you've been selected to work on this show tomorrow. Like, reply yes right now, and then they'll send you your details. So you say yes again if you're still available. They check again in the later time because you could be getting multiple texts for the next day saying like, you know, different shows are asking if you're available. So like if show A asks you if you're available, and then show B asks you if you're available, and then like in the meantime, show B got back to you sooner and said you're booked, then you'd have to tell show A that you're not available anymore. Because also you can't like double book yourself. It's very frowned upon to cancel. This whole thing, it's like your reputation is everything. You want to be a reliable background person. You don't always want to get booked and then cancel because then they'll stop reaching out to book you, especially like canceling last minute. Big no-no showing up late to set. Big no-no, showing up unprepared or like not doing what it said to do on your details. Details, once you're booked, then it's like partially online and partially a call. So you get, there's a phone number that you listen to. It has like an automated tape and this tells you like your call time or if there'll be any different changes to your call time. Your call time is like what time you need to show up to work. And then on that uh, phone line, it also gives you like a code and to get on the website where you get your details. So you type in the show name, you type in a numerical code, and then it takes you to a page that tells you the location of what you're doing, um, what you need to wear, just any like makeup and hair notes that go along with it. And it's very important that you read everything through and that you follow directions. Like background, it's not a difficult job. I mean, there are certain instances where maybe you'll do something tricky, but most of the time it's pretty simple and it's just about listening, following directions, and just like showing up to do your job. Also the thing, like whole hours of it, like filming takes a long time. So you get like a base rate pay for eight hours. If you work less than eight hours, you still make the full eight hour pay because you were booked for the entire day. And then after eight hours, you go into like overtime, double overtime. Usually like 12 hours is a pretty normal day. Like if I work less than 12 hours, I think it's a short day. And then longer than that, I'm like, oh, this is long, but like keep giving me that double overtime time I'm cool with it also another way to get booked through central is they have online when they're looking for submissions for things it's usually like a day-by-day -day basis you're kind of looking day-to-day -day on things there are multiple day shoots there are some things that are farther in advance but you know say I, I, I got this job that I just got booked for today online they were asking for submissions for you know people in this age range and this like gender and all that that I fit into I submitted I send an email it gives you an email address and you know, I put a, a recent picture of myself and then they decide if I'm a right fit for it. I get a lot of work through submissions. There's also calling services, like booking services that you pay like a monthly fee for. And then these people are kind of responsible for submitting you for things. There are other companies besides Central. There's like Rich King Casting. There's casting agencies in Los Angeles. So if you have a calling service, they just submit you for different projects and it's more for people who are looking to do background more regularly because just relying on Central to reach out to you every once in a while, like you're gonna get booked less often usually than if you have a calling service. But also so much of it, it's like, what do you look like? Are you someone that fits into a lot of different categories? As background, you wanna be pretty versatile. Like I can do 18 to look younger. I can do 20s, I can do 30s, but I know I can't really get booked as being a parent. Like they won't book me. It's harder for me to even also just get picked as being like an office worker because I'm told that I just, I look very young. But there's also things like sizes. There is with all this, you know, I said it's about looks and there is definitely like some, you know, diversity challenges. But you know, I do see things, it's like they are, we're specifically looking for Hispanic, we're specifically looking for African-American, Asian. But then I also see lots of call, calls where they're just looking for Caucasian people. I've been on lots of sets where, you know, vast majority for like a very big call could be like Caucasian people. And then they just have like a few people of color in the mix. I'm not like in charge of any of this. It's all the casting stuff. I don't think it's centrals. It's like the production. It all comes down from like what production is looking for. And then also like age and size. I feel like I tend to work with a lot of people similar in age to me. There are a lot of like massive calls for like elderly people, but there are like, you know, there are elderly people that are needed for all sorts of things. And then also size gets into a thing. For a lot of the time I can just see on the submissions, no bigger than a size eight. And you know, it's like central, like they take your measurements, like bust, hips, 
uh, waist, all that stuff. And for a lot of calls, I will see things. It's like, oh, we're only looking for a size four or smaller. Like there is definitely, you know, a preference for smaller bodies. Like with my body type, like I don't really get picked for like bathing suit things very often. And I'm not Hollywood standards of what most directors want to see in the background of, you know, their beach scene. That's just the way it is at the moment. Always hopeful for change and more inclusivity and more representation in media in general, you know? Other things, there are fittings. So say you're working on a period show. They don't really expect you to have your own wardrobe for that. So you would have a separate day for a fitting. You're paid for like two hours for a fitting. You go to, mostly there's like these costume warehouses. When you go there, you have a certain time. You meet with a costumer. They find clothes that fit you. They take a picture of you in the clothes and then day of when you go to set all your stuff is organized like in a bag and hangers for you like that is your outfit your pre-fit for it and I really like period things like I don't love fittings because it's like a, it's kind of a day that you're not getting paid very much for background I like you know I do other things to earn money and also just fittings can be a little awkward like I had a fitting this past week and you know I was there and like a girl was there with me at the same time and the costumers were just like praising this girl for how like thin and fit she was just like over the top saying how gorgeous she was and I'm just like standing there like cool I'm chill I'm fine with this I'm not insecure at all uh yes sure take a tape measure around me and you know write it down on a big piece of paper next to this other girl who has much smaller measurements than I do I'm fine I'm chill that's how it is that's kind of what you signed up for you're like a body like to be there you're set dressing in a way but you are still a person and you matter of course so as far as wardrobe goes for most shoots you are responsible for bringing your own clothes so on that details page i mentioned say it's a college party scene it will say we're looking for preppy and it'll say like these certain kinds of colors heels or no heels you could say this is supposed to be fall in georgia so bring layers and a jacket like it gives you an idea of what to have a lot of times there are pictures on the details page to give you an idea of what the wardrobe is looking for and it's just generally you're supposed to bring like wear an outfit that's possible and then bring like two other options with you garment bags are nice i tend to put my things in a garment bag it just looks more professional your clothes don't get all wrinkly and things like that you just you want to look polished like do not show up to set with your wardrobe alternative just like crumpled up in a duffel bag like the costume people will glare at you and make you feel like a full idiot don't do that and you just want to follow the directions best that you can since i've been doing this for a while i really like i kind of know now what the costumers want like i'll have like this certain outfit or this shirt like i know wardrobe always loves it and picks it so i know now like i have certain outfits that i just like these are the ones i always bring for certain categories because i know they get picked or i know what to wear like it's the most satisfying when you show up and you're like wearing something that you think is good and the costume person is like you look perfect you don't need to change anything a lot of times though they'll say oh, okay put this shirt on instead and then if they don't like anything that you have or they just kind of change things last minute it's not really your fault that they're maybe suddenly the event is dressier than they portrayed on the details blog then you will get something to wear from the wardrobe truck and with that you kind of like they give you give them your name you give them your uh, voucher and then at the end of the day at the end of the shoot you take whatever they gave you off you get your voucher back it's a whole exchange you can't just like steal clothes and you shouldn't do that you know like be a good person you're there to work so that's the whole wardrobe thing um, on details it'll also go into hair and makeup you know especially for ladies but also like for period pieces and stuff for men it will say certain things about their facial hair like sideburns or if it's 18 to look younger it'll say like men must be clean shaven like i've shown up to set and the head of makeup is just like destroying some boys for like having stubble and like making them shave you just you gotta follow directions but yeah for ladies um a lot of times it'll just you know become like hair and makeup ready like don't show up with wet hair don't show up like putting your makeup on like as you're waiting like my makeup minimum standard makeup that I do for shoots is you know I put foundation and powder on I put mascara and a little bit of lip color and then I bring lip color options and I bring some powder to touch up throughout the day for certain things like for period pieces a lot of the time the makeup people are expecting to fully do your makeup will just say like show up with foundation only bring lip color options you know if I was 
working on an 80s show, they're gonna do like intense eyeshadow on me and also like they're gonna do things to my hair. A lot of times I've done things for period pieces, you need to show up with rollers in your hair and they have a whole picture of what the roller should look like. So after all this, details page, you know your call time, you got your outfits ready to go, and you show up to set. Also, a lot of times call times can be very early. Like I've had, you know, 5 a.m. call times and you gotta show up there. I tend to show up about half hour to 15 minutes early. You just never know with the parking situation. It's just always better to be early than to be late. You can get like penalized from Central. You could just kind of ruin your reputation at that show because a lot of times I've worked on a show and then they ask me to come back for another day and that's good, more work. There are also night calls or all night calls. Then, you know, your call time could be around like 7 p.m. and you're going till 7 a.m. Like it needs to be an outdoor nighttime shoot and then you're just there all night Night and those are pretty rough and I try to avoid night shoots because they really just destroy me and most people you know we're not nocturnal but also like I've had shoots where my call time is like 1 p.m. or 11 a.m. and it's like a pretty short day it just kind of all depends what production is doing like production is working like day after day and they don't really care that you don't get to sleep in like everything is about getting this TV show finished you know don't piss and whine about early call times or late call times you just kind of need to accept like this is the job that you're doing and you agreed to do this the next day or whatever without any time restrictions. You said, I'll work whenever. So if call time is 5 a.m. and it's an hour away from where you live, that's what you gotta do. So here's the rundown for once you get to set. A lot of times you're parking in a different spot than where you're filming. So you'll park somewhere and then like a random white van will show up and you get in the van and it'll take you to base camp, which is, you know, where like all the trailers are and you know, where like wardrobe is and things like that. Sometimes where you're parking is like just walking distance to base camp. Also the thing with this, like every day, every production is different, but they're also the same. Like there's a pattern and rhythm to it all, but there's a lot of variety. Then once you get to base camp, you're checking in with either the second second assistant director or like a set PA, you know, they have your name on a list and they hand you your voucher and this has your name on it. You put like your social on it and your address and sign it. You put like your call time at the end of the day with your voucher, you're writing in like the meal times, which like the second second AD tells you you know, what to put there, also tells you your out time. This is like, you know, if you're punching in, punching out, and you get a copy of it, production gets a copy of it, and this is essentially how you get paid. Like, if you just left set and you never got signed out at the end of the day, you're not gonna get paid. So it's very important to keep an eye on your voucher, and also, like I said, with wardrobe, if you are wearing something from wardrobe, then wardrobe takes your voucher and then they give it back to you at the end of the day, and that's just to, from there on, to ensure that the clothing is safe, that you're, they're getting everything back. Once you get to set, a lot of times there is breakfast, and breakfast can be at any time, but they just call it breakfast if that's what you're eating before you start shooting. There's catering, there's trucks. I bring a lot of food for myself, but you know, there tends to always be fruit that I can eat, and sometimes there's, you know, potatoes that look okay. But you know, the food varies set to set. I've had most of the time, there's a lot of food and people seem to like it. It's good food on you know lower budget sets. Food isn't as good or there's just like not as much food offered to background because you're like lower priority than crew. Once you check in, sometimes they'll send you to breakfast right away. Sometimes then you, you just go right to wardrobe and hair and you go through that whole thing of getting approved. There's lots of approval for things. There's lots of standing and getting your picture taken with other background, just like for their records and for continuity in case there's reshoots or it's a multiple day shoot. Because everything in production takes so much longer than you think it would, you know, like three minutes of a TV show like could have taken two days to film or more. You just, it's a long time. And then once you're like all like ready for set and everything, you're usually sent to holding. So holding is like where you hang out, where you put all your stuff as background. It's like your little uh, waiting room area. That can be a physical room. It could be some chairs that are just offset like at a studio it could be like a tent outside there's always chairs for you one great thing to have as a background actor is 
a portable charger because you don't know if there's going to be outlets or how many there will be and you're there a long time and you want to have your phone charged so portable charger is a necessity i bring like a backpack with me because one like i bring a lot of food but i have my charger in there i have my extra makeup i can bring a book bring journal sometimes people bring like laptops because you know someone you can get like a ton of downtime you're just waiting around all day and people are like well i'm gonna do work on my laptop and i don't know that just makes me really uneasy to bring my laptop around there is always security like people watching your stuff and you just don't know how long you're gonna have sitting and waiting around like I've also been like called to set for a show and then they never even used me like I just hung out the whole day just like reading and then they never needed me they just called too many people also like the amount of people who are background varies a lot I've been on set where there's just like one other background person or I've been like one of 400 people like 60 to 100 people feels kind of like the average size of shoots that I've done and it's all there's all sorts of people there mainly they're people who um you know aspiring working actors I mean you are technically a working actor or background actor when you're doing this and it can be very social or you can be not social I've made some like great buddies doing backgrounds and there are other days where I'm just like I'm not going to talk to anyone this entire time because I'm just not in the mood or I just want to sit here and read my book I really like it you now you have choices you can be as social or not social as you want and it is cool like as I've been doing this for several months like there are just a lot of people I recognize, like maybe someone I don't normally talk to, but I'm like, oh yeah, I know that guy or I know that girl. Like I've worked with them a bunch of times. And then eventually you're like, hey, my name's Rachel, by the way, what's your name? So people, you know, talk and holding like that, or you can just like get talking to people on set, like if you're just like by them all the time. And then once you get to set, you know, it's a wide variety of what you'll be doing. If it's a restaurant scene, then you get placed maybe at a table with someone else and like you're supposed to be on a date or maybe you are set to do a cross in that scene. So that means you're walking and you'll either be told like motion silently by um, an AD or a set PA like when to walk or they'll say like a few beats after we start, you know, walk here. So you're, you're given directions by people. Also how you know when to go. Um, so say like scene is start, like pictures up, cameras rolling, then director will say background and that's when you as background are supposed to, you know, come alive. So you're just sitting here hanging out at this pretend restaurant and then it's a background and then you're, you know, pantomiming, talking, doing what you're doing and then director says action and action is for the principal actors, you know, the main actors that are in the scene. Most of the stuff you do as background is pantomiming, talking. So you know, you're pretending to have a conversation. You need to be totally silent. There are times where say, hey, you can actually talk in this one if they want audio. The majority of the time you're pantomiming, you're being quiet because we need to hear what the principal actors are talking about. What I like to do when I'm pantomiming, like I'll just start uh, telling very personal things about myself, just like stories, but it's all quiet and no one knows what I'm saying. If I can't think of anything to say, I'm like going brain dead. I just start reciting song lyrics and you know, just like make it real, pretend to laugh, you know, eat Emote. They want you to like use your hands a little bit more, but don't be like extreme and weird and obvious. Just be a natural person. It's fun. It's also tedious and you just kind of zone out. I don't know. You just, you just do it. Or you're just walking around or you're walking and pantomiming. Um, I've done things where I was crying. I just was very excited today. I saw a clip. I'm in the trailer for Dollface. That was one of the first background gigs that I booked and my full face is just right in it. I've worked a bunch of different jobs and so far I just had two where I like really saw myself because most of the time you're just buried in the background like I've been like a pedestrian like way across the street like I know I'm not going to be like visibly in the final cut so it's always a nice surprise when you're like really in the shot the other thing I was recently in is in the show why woman kill and I was just like my full face was right in the back the entire scene I was talking the pants miming with a date at a restaurant so it was really cool to you know see that I'm on TV wild I'm trying to think of just other background gigs I've done like different things you're doing I've been you know dancing you're supposed to be at a party I've been pretending to eat I've been like lounging poolside I've been like at the crowd at a football game I did that for euphoria I'm just a blurry blob in the background but I was there all night <laughs> I've been pedestrian, I've been like college student playing beer pong. A lot of times you have a prop, like a fake drink, 
there's never real alcohol on set. There's like non-alcoholic beer like O'Doul's and for like cocktails, it's just like sodas and things like that. Also for certain things, there's like pretend cigarettes, there's herbal cigarettes and you do get a pay bump if you're like smoking that. I never smoke it, but I have a lot of times you're just like around it or given like a fake cigar that I was just like holding. There's all these different sort of pay bumps. You get pay bumps for smoke. There's like ambiance, smoky things, like just like a smoke machine. You get a pay bump for that. Pay bumps for like if you were running. Oh yeah, I've done things for Jane the Virgin. I was like a marathon runner. I'm just running around all day. You do all sorts of things and it is like it's exciting for me I like that showing up to set and not really knowing what I'm doing like sure if I get booked as like customer then I just know I'm like okay like that's pretty self-explanatory when you are working outside it's important to protect yourself with sunscreen there's just lots of things you like learn by doing it you know there's always water also when you're in holding there is like a snack table for background. Most productions are very good about feeding everyone because you're working long hours. They want everyone to be comfortable. So there's like standard background snacks. There's like apples and bananas. There's chips and like pastries and stuff. Um, there's always coffee and water and like lemonade, things like that. I tend to eat a lot of bananas on set. For bathrooms, there's like, it's all like bathroom trailers. Sometimes you're in like a real indoor bathroom place, but you get used to just using, they're like step above porta potties, but you know, they're not the nicest bathrooms and you just kind of, that's what you do. That's what the crew is doing. Everyone's in the same boat with that. Also, okay, you're on set. There's big actors there. I've been on set with actors who I really admire, who I think are so cool. When you're background, it's kind of like, don't speak unless spoken to, unless it's to the second second AD or a set PA, because those people are like, you are working with them, they're giving you direction, they're also your people to go to for help for something, if there's an issue, if you don't know where the bathroom is, like, those are the people you talk to. Like, I would never go up to the director or the writer or a principal actor and start talking to them. Stay in your lane. Like, everyone is there to work and to do their job. This isn't a time to be a fangirl and get a picture with people, like, that's just, that's not what you do. <laughs> but a lot of times, you know, if you are in a scene, like you're working nearby with the principal actor, like I've had them, they introduce themselves, they're like, oh, hello, how are you? Like they'll make a little conversation, they'll acknowledge you as a person. And then after that, like you respect their space. You know, I could be sitting right next to the principal actor and I'm not gonna try to talk to them. Like that's just, you don't do that. It's not them being snobby. They're there to do their job, not to like be buddies with you. Throughout all this time I've been doing it, I only ever saw like one person like say something inappropriate to a principal actor, which was just like talk, trying to like be like buddies with them. It was really awkward for everyone involved. Don't do that. There's also a lot of confidentiality in all of this. There are, I have been on sets with certain actors and like before we were brought to set, the AD said like, hey, so this actor's here. We know, very exciting. They made it very clear, like do not try to talk to them. Do not like stare at them. They just like made it very clear this actor is a bit touchy yeah also like don't just like stand there and like stare at the main actor sometimes it can be tricky it's like wow that actress is so beautiful but like don't be a, a creepy weirdo general rule of life and just confidentiality and all of this don't be posting on social media like hello i'm here on this set for this tv show and this is the role i'm doing like no you can get like sued by big studios and they'll be really bad. Like I post on my Instagram, if I'm wearing like a cool outfit for work, I'll post a picture in the outfit. I don't say where I was or what I was doing or anything. And even that is still kind of risky. Once you're signed with Central, you are kind of signing confidentiality, but then I've been on sets where there's extra confidentiality agreements. Cause you know, they don't want things to get released before they come out. And there are horror stories of people posting about things on social media and getting sued for millions of dollars. Oh yeah, also things about location. Sometimes, you know, you're on location, like we're filming at like a house that they were rented for a set or you're working on a studio lot. I've basically been on every big studio lot here in Los Angeles, like Warner Brothers, Sony, Disney, Fox, like ABC, like everything's kind of, you know, together in a way, like everything's owned by everything. But yeah, so when you're working on a studio lot, you're on like a big warehouse, which is like the set and it's cool to see all that. You know, I've been in a school, but it's not a real school or I've been shooting at a real school. It's just, 
it's all different. I honestly prefer working on location than to working at studios. It's just, I don't know, it feels a little more like comfy on location. Studios feel a little more sterile to me. It's also always very cold in studios. For lunch, which is just, they call any meal lunch on set, like it could be midnight and they'll still call it lunch. But for that, um, you can sort of ballpark it to be around six hours after your call time. Anytime after six hours from your call time, you do get a meal penalty. But a lot of times you're just going by what's best for the whole production. So that's why there's like snacks all the time because you just kind of never know when you're going to eat. And then for lunch, it's, you know, there's usually always catering. Sometimes it'll be a walk away lunch and that's usually like at a studio lot where you just kind of have to like, they'll give you an hour and you can like go get food for yourself somewhere. I think that's kind of lame when they don't give you food. But most of the time there's catering trucks, like a whole setup thing. And there's usually, you know, separate stuff for background and then crew has their own certain line. A lot of times the food, it's about the same. Sometimes there, a lot of times there is like slightly better stuff going on for crew catering because that's the way it is. But yeah, you get in the line, there's either an hour or a half hour and it's just kind of break time for everyone. You can eat as much as you want. A lot of people, they'll try to like load up and like pack food for later. If you're like working a lot, like you can get away with not getting groceries. Like you'll, you can get a lot of food working on set. Less so for someone like me who has a very particular diet, but you know, when there's a good salad bar, I'm living pretty large. And then after lunch is over, you get back going. But also right before you start Start. like once everyone's checked in and holding a lot of times the AD will come over and say like hello everyone like kind of this is what we're doing today sometimes they'll say we have this many scenes that we're doing today or you know today you guys are at this super exciting party so it will be high energy or they'll give you a little description of what they're doing you know for what you're doing for the day but yeah so a lot of it you're just kind of going blind until people tell you like you don't know what's happening in the scene you don't get a copy of the script also a lot of times they'll call you back background artists or background friends. Like production will be like, hey, background friends, we're doing this, blah, blah, blah. You'll get thanked at the end of the day. Director thanks you a lot of times. Like actors are like, thank you guys for being here. When it's time to wrap, like everyone's like celebrating and clapping because that means the day is over and they've accomplished things. And then you, you check out and all that stuff and you get back to your car and you go home. I feel like the thing I like most about doing background is just getting to see how all these different types of shows and some movies are just made. I've been on, you know, sitcom comedies that have like a live studio audience. I've been on, you know, big dramas from like HBO. I've been on kid shows and more adult shows. I've seen like people do stunts. Like I've just seen so many different shows work and it's everything, it's just, it's just cool. I'm into film, I have big dreams of being a screenwriter so I like seeing like you know once you put something on a page you're seeing how that is actually brought to light like it's definitely impacted how i watch things like sure i've worked behind the scenes like in college on productions but it's way different than now say i worked on a tv show and then i'm watching that tv show now and seeing how it came out to look and then if i haven't worked on something i'm watching it i'm noticing the background and like how they were directed and i try to look for people i know if i can just thinking about like what was all the crew that was set up behind there? Because it takes a whole village to make something. Like there's so many people there. There's so many different camera angles for each scene. There's different cuts and there's you know, line variations. There's just like all this stuff that's like, it's, just, it's a whole like active machine. And it's cool to just like get to be a part of it. And it's honestly kind of a relaxing role in a sense, like kind of there and a lot of times just kind of sitting and getting to watch. I'm not like frantically running around and figuring out how we're gonna make this shot work. I get to be more of an observer. And also the downtime is nice. I've like written lots of things on set or just like met some cool people or had new experiences. So yeah, that's my take on being a background actor. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you liked it and you can subscribe to my channel. I'll be putting out new videos every Monday and Thursday. Leave me a comment, tell me what you thought about all that's going on right here. And as always, thank you so much for being here. Goodbye. See, this shirt, I would never bring it on set because tiny patterns are a big no-no. Like, if I showed up in this shirt, the wardrobe people would look at me like I had lost all my marbles. But I can wear it here on YouTube because this is my TV show.